I wanted to select a cast of women who had different political party affiliations, thus party girls. But the cast I selected transcended the idea of just putting together people from different political parties. It really became about the issues that they cared about and the diversity of things that in their lives that made those things important to them. So Party Girls ends up being not just about wanting to even vote in the presidential election, but also wanting to give air to issues and concerns that um, were important to millennial women of color who were first time voters in this country. The producer gets a phone call and all of a sudden things are moving pretty fast. We actually have the opportunity to go to the Democratic National Convention. Cool. <laughs> but we find out that it's only three tickets. So Jessica sacrificed herself. This is what democracy jams like. This is what democracy jams like. She's like, well, I'm basically Republican, so why am I going in there? I did feel a little bit more at home with the anti-DNC people. <laughs> it doesn't really seem like we live in a democracy. I can't trust Hillary. They stole the primary in 12 states, so they'll steal it in November, too. Okay. I still think a lot of those people were crazy, but I also learned that a lot of people really just wanted to tear down the two-party system to have a fairer democracy, and that's something I, I can get behind. Prior to being on the floor of the DNC, I hadn't really thought about being a delegate, but I think it's really interesting. Walking the delegate floor was like exhilarating. I've watched on TV for all these years, and I'm finally like right there. After spending some time on the delegate floor, we were gonna be on a live program with Hill Harper, which was nerve wracking, because it was live. Let's talk about young people voting Listening to Sara respond to Hill, I just felt like I was watching a correspondent on like CNN or something. The assumption should be that as a Muslim American that obviously I don't condone terrorism. You know, we have one party who's saying ban Muslims, but then Democrats still want Muslim Americans to run around with the American flag on their back. And like they don't love America just as much as any other American of any other faith. I don't think I had noticed that before. I don't think I had noticed that there was a reason to be offended. I don't feel like I participated in that conversation as much as I had hoped to, but there's room for growth. The DNC and the protests were rare opportunities to witness our democracy in action. Now it's time for these young women to understand the platform they each have and how to use it. So they'll be meeting with Color of Change, a nonpartisan organization that uses new media to create movements surrounding social issues. I'd love to hear from you. What are some of the things going through your head as first time voters? What are you like most excited about or nervous about? Uh, how do I say this? I really don't have much like to work with this election. We may not always be inspired every election by our choices at the top of the ticket, but the laws that are being passed in states around the country are coming from mayors and governors and state legislatures. One of the things we've been doing at Color of Change is really focusing our attention on district attorney races. There are 2,400 district attorney prosecutors around the country. 70% of them run unopposed. They have much more power in terms of who goes to jail and who doesn't, who gets leniency and who doesn't, than the President of the United States does. I was never really into politics, but it was never a really big thing in my house. So I feel like I have a big learning curve. I'm still on this journey of figuring it out myself. Voting is a piece of civic engagement for us. Voting is sort of like the stretching or the yoga of civic engagement. <laughs> it's not going to help you build all the muscle, but if you don't stretch, it's going to hurt later. And so voting is incredibly important, but it's not the only thing that we have to do to build the type of power to make sure those in power hear our voices and do the things that we hope that they'll do. My grandmother at my age was arrested just for sitting in a certain section of the bus, it's just like, we've come so far, but have so much further to go, and I wanna make sure we get there. The car we were kinda wondering, is voting for a third party candidate, is that wasting your vote, or is it revolutionary? 
for me, I think your vote has to be a, a truly personal thing for you. Like your vote is your power. The challenge is really understanding the full slate of candidates. And you have to really take into consideration what is the scenario, what is the world that I want. I do think this is the moment where we have the most power yeah. um, to get the candidate in that we think that we can hold the most accountable yeah. to our issues. Mm -hmm. And I do believe that there are big things at stake. The mm -hmm. biggest thing on the national level is the Supreme Court. It's gonna be our strategy and the strategic way we use our power and our vote that will allow us to make our numbers more impactful and to force those in power to have to stand up and listen to us even when they don't want to. With the events of Philly behind us and lots more road to travel, we're stopping briefly in Washington, D.C. to meet up with the last two party girls. Are you still making eggs? Yeah. Yummy. Hi. Oh, I thought we could taste her. Hi. Nice to meet you. My name is Matisse Rogers. I'm from Minneapolis, Minnesota, and I'm 19 years old. I go to University okay. of Michigan. Wait, I, do, I just graduated from U of M. Really? Yeah. No way. <laughs> Both my parents are very, very liberal. And though I might agree with what my parents have been telling me, I also might not agree. Probably 60% of me is Democratic leaning, 40% is complete undecided. I just want to increase my interaction with people who have thoughts that are different than mine. Oh, hi, Mitzi. You said you were from Georgia? Yes. I'm from California. My full name is Mitzi Romina Salgado, and I'm 25 years old. I literally grew up on the international border at the port of San Diego in Tijuana. Am I the oldest here? Yes. Yeah. Wow. yeah. No way. Super youthful looking now. Oh, thanks. <laughs> Growing up, I fought like hell to be what my parents wanted me to be. Cast and polite and humble because that's how, as a Mexican woman, you were brought up. But I was just not that. I found myself as a feminist and um, I found my voice. So what did you study in? Oh, I did my undergrad in women's studies. And oh. oh, wow. <gasps> I love women's studies. Like that, yeah. <laughs> Seeing that they were all women of color, I knew that the journey was gonna be more intimate because we all have filters that we use at times and I felt like none of us were gonna need to use those filters. <laughs> what do you want, like, like, ethnic background? Um, I'm half white, half black. The best yeah. of both worlds. Yeah. <laughs> I knew that that's obviously a really important part. I just didn't expect it to be a topic of discussion so soon after arrival. I've never experienced racism. Have you ever been followed in a store? No, I've never been followed wow. in a store. Yeah, I've never been followed. Or like told that like you like that you're very articulate. No, I haven't experienced it much either. And also, it you have racist, to remember that you are half white. Half I'm not white. white. I am black and white, and a lot of black people tell me that I act white or that I don't act black. People have hit me with like you're not allowed to check off the black box because you're half white. It made yeah. me really yeah. angry. In America, just like Barack Obama's the first black president, she's a black girl. I've been like wondering this for a couple of days because I guess I had like a very stereotypical view of what a black Republican would be. Was there something that like turned you off the Democratic Party or? When I was younger, I used to read Time and Newsweek magazines and I would compare the articles and everything. And I would find myself disagreeing with them all and they were all like, written with like a liberal slant. So I was like, mm -hmm. oh man, these people actually don't make sense at all. Like socially, I really don't care what people do, but financially, I don't like taxes. People wanted to ask me about Republican stereotypes. Kind of like, okay, you're Republican, but not this kind of Republican. So would you say that fiscal concerns, is like my, your main tie primary, to the Republicans? It's my primary concern. Jessica wants to be filthy rich. <laughs> <laughs> like everybody's getting to know each other and then we get in deep, like automatically. I don't get into that like deep conversations often. But I liked it. I really find it fascinating how you guys think about issues all the time. I always do. <laughs> Watching them connect on this level, I thought it might interest them to take the issues they care about and come up with a video campaign to get other people to care about them too. These young women are stepping out onto the nation's capital to amplify their own voices, to speak for themselves. This is a call to all Muslim women. What if being broke was illegal? This will be my first time voting in a presidential election. I never had the chance before, but now I feel powerful.
I feel like millennials get a lot of crap for being apathetic when millennials are really pushing the agenda forward. Everyone has a platform, and the minute you decide not to use your platform, you, you give up power. I remember a time that I was younger. I don't know what election my mom was about to vote in, but polls were about to close. And I was like, can we just skip it? And she looked at me like I was crazy. It made me understand the importance of voting and to really use my voice.